All right. Here we go. All right. Annie, did you hear what, what she just said? Did you hear what she just said? You sound so far away, dissenting Lizzie say, that they cannot hear you, nor they don't understand what you are saying. All right. Okay. Now let's go for tonight. Yeah. Many a times, The focus of us, please, I hope that you can hear me very clearly, every one of you. Please, 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 please tell me if you cannot hear me clearly. Yes. Okay, what is yes? Yes means I can hear you. Yes. Or yes you are means. Very clear. Okay. I can hear you. Okay. You are very clear. Oh, good. Many a times, when we watched our parents, how devoted they were to God, we said, wow! That devotion meant that everything they do in this world came from what we called a religious worldview. They came from a religious... So, a religious worldview was the foundation that gives power and strength and energy and passion. Their interpretation of everything comes from a religious worldview. I don't know what I should keep this here. It will be better here. I think that is it. This is better here. All right, here we go. Okay, I think it's better like this. Good. So, they interpreted life. They entered life only from one little window. One tiny, very tiny little window. Which was, go to church, send in your offering, your tithes. Life rallied around the pastor, the deacons, the songs, the prayers. But if all of you want to be honest, realize that while life revolves around a religious worldview, many of those churches had no investments, cannot pay anyone's bill, cannot buy them a car, were not able to send the children of their members to college, didn't even have money to pay the pastor, talk less of those who sang in the choir full time. You know that what I'm saying is true. And so the game of playing church continued until each of them started to die one after the other. Because the world revolves around one tiny mirror, a religious worldview. Even if your parent and my parent were not extreme, they were not fanatics, they were nice, calm, cool, collected people. But their worldview was very little. Now, their worldview did not contain the quests to dominate life, the quest to make themselves happy, the quest to create their own happiness. That's why many of you, when you hear me talking about this kind of thing, it seems very strange to you. And for many of you, the way that I approach ministry is very unique and it's something that is awesome 
but you don't even know where to place it. You don't even know how to interpret it. I'll give you an example. If you have a house rent to pay or a mortgage to make, and all that you have is $2,000 in your hand, and that is for you to pay the mortgage, the car, the car note is not yet even paid. All that is in your hand is just 2000 There are some wicked preachers and pastors and evangelists and apostles and bishops and archbishops, etc., who will tell you to pay your tithe first. So your special seed. God will provide you money to do your car note and to pay your mortgage. And people fall for that. Others will tell you to send that $2,000 and start to build money in the kingdom of God for God to give you a debt-free house. And people fall for that. But Edekai Mary will tell you to go and negotiate with the car be there, whether it be the bank that is financing your car or the car sellers themselves. And also to go and negotiate with whichever financial institution is in charge of your mortgage for your house. Go and negotiate with them what you have to give to them so that at least someone can have a thousand dollars for the mortgage 500 can at least go for the car and now you are still owing but at least let 500 remain for food for gas and for emergencies I have not talked about sowing seed or paying tithes. I have not. For some of you, from a business perspective, you will say that I'm not a good salesman, I'm not a good businessman, because I do that. Well, the reason I do that is I see church or mission work. I see it first and foremost from the perspective of the Sabbath was made for humans, not humans to be sacrificed for the Sabbath. I see it from the perspective of show me one person that either Jesus or the prophets of the Old Testament or Abraham, the major foundation of starting over. Show me one place, including the life of David, Moses, all of them. Show me one place in the Bible where the desire of God is for you to build God a house or build God a kingdom or make God happy. Show me one place. Show me one place in the life of Adam and Eve where God approached them and talk about himself. It's always about how to make a human being very happy, joyful, have material possession, protect the material and financial things that has been given to you and also protect your physical, mental, and supernatural relationship with God as a spirit being in human form. Ha! 
I like it. Samantha, I hope you are writing that down for me. As a spirit being in human form. See, because you see, many of you want to do things for God. I have come across people who said to me, the only reason why I relate with you is because of the power of God you carry. You can perform miracles, you can heal the sick, you can call money to appear for people. That's why I follow you. If you cannot do those things, I have no need of you. And that's true. Others, I follow you because of God. Others, I follow you because of Jesus. I'm not stupid why people follow me. I'm not. I know. I know of people who, if I'm sick, or there are financial needs, major investment to be done, I know of those of you who suspend everything they are doing and fly down to make sure what needs to be bought is bought. Money that needs to be invested is invested. They will bring their own or they will post it. I know of people like that. I know people who will think about it and think about it. What will be their profit before they make one move? And I know people who will just rush because that's who they are naturally and make sure that every wish, want, every business is put together. I know people will sit me down to calculate this is what we will profit from this. I'm drawing 20, 200, 100k. I know people who if they hear that I'm seeing a doctor, even for one little reason, they will call right away. In a year's time, I will no longer be doing mission the way we are doing it. No longer exists. It will be operating in a different format. There will be people, whether physically present with me, or in different countries, with the best high tech, high tech doing business with me. I reach a point I can no longer do my own laundry or cook my own food or take care of my own home. The people who are going to be paid to do those things. The people who will not be allowed to be our core partners, even on a monthly basis, they can't pay their tithes. Those I know who can adequately do it because they have enough money to cover everything. They've been blessed. If you know what it takes for me to appear on our broadcast, you will understand what I'm talking about. Or what it means to pick one holy vestment or outfit after using it and send it to the laundry to the to the uh, the dry cleaner and go back and bring it. takes time to learn those things. What color is for what? For what service? What I'm practicing now with Victoria is working. People can no longer talk to me. They have to call her for her to schedule them. And if there are people outside our ministry, they have to pay for it. And it's working just like that. When people, when people call the three one six five one two six nine four four. They call the office one immediately. If I am there, I will tell them the number for them to call. And some people are like, "Wow, why can't I talk to you now?" I said, "No." 
she will tell you what to do. There is a protocol. Let's continue. So, a lot of people are worshipping God for what God can give them. Because God can protect them from evil. There are people who interpret the world from a political viewpoint. Political viewpoint only. Others from a racial viewpoint. Others from a healthcare point. Others from multicultural viewpoint. Others from educational. Others from a business viewpoint only. Why can't we interpret life from all this together? Because what I've observed is that those who only have one little area from which they see life cannot dominate the world. It will be difficult for the power of God to show up to help them. For example, if everything you do, you are doing it to build God's kingdom and you are doing it to please God only. Have you realized that when God approached Abraham, he said to him, I will make of thee a great nation. God wasn't asking anything of Abraham. He said, if you are willing to follow me, I am going to make of thee nations will be bad out of thee. So whose kingdom was Abraham building? Whose government? Whose nation or nations? Let's face it. Please, can somebody help us? I will make of thee a great nation. And I will bless thee. I will bless thee. So that you will be a blessing. Those who bless you, I will bless them. Those who try to mock you, make light of you, curse you, I will curse them. Through you, all the nations of the earth shall be blessed or shall bless themselves through you. Do you hear God saying anything about himself there? No. When he, no. When he gave the biggest blessing ever, to Adam and Eve, be blessed, be fruitful, multiply, have dominion, replenish, subdue, all of that. Did you hear God saying anything about Adam and Eve doing anything for him? No. no. About Abraham no. doing anything for him? No. It's for them. It's not for God. It's for them. No. It's for Abraham. It's for Adam and Eve. Do you guys see what I'm seeing? Yeah. So why are they not teaching this in the churches? So people spend so people spend all their money trying to build God's kingdom. And what are they building? They are building the watchtower and awake for Jehovah's Witnesses. Building an empty temple that looks like where they perform occult rituals for moments tell me about it building an institution for Roman Catholics that has nothing to do with the kingdom of God itself very little I can go on and on I'm not against these people because that's the way they see life not against them Every, every time God appears to David is always something that will benefit who? Benefit who? David. Benefit God or benefit David? David? Benefit David. Always! Why was Jesus here? Why, why was he born a baby? Grew up a man? Did mission here. 
gave himself willingly to be tortured and crucified, died, was buried, continued mission work for three days and three nights in the land of those who are alive and waiting. And then rose again. And people saw him physically, touch him, ate with him. For who was he doing all those things? Was he doing it for God the Father? Or for himself? Or for the Holy Ghost? Or for the angels? Or for the demons? And fallen angels? Or living angels? Or for humanity? One portion, one portion, thank you, one portion of the scripture tells you everything. For the love of God is so big for human beings that he sent his only, forgot, uh, only begotten son. Not forgotten son. His only begotten son. Did you hear that? He gave his only begotten son to the world. You see that? It's always for human beings. Don't allow people to deceive you anymore. If you, if you are going ever to prosper in life, follow Idikai Mary. If you are going to make big money, follow me. Don't judge me or criticize me. Or, think, or take my kindness and goodness and caring. Don't take it for a witness. Because if you see the aggressive side of me, of me you may not like it. The aggressive side of me that pursues money, material resources, and protect human beings. You will be like, wow. I'm not violent. But I know how to protect what is mine and who are mine. So that's why when people come to me and they are, oh, I belong to Jesus, I belong to God the Father, I belong to the Holy Ghost, I belong. I say to them, do you belong to a human being first? Which of God's anointed do you belong to first? John the Baptist had his disciples, Jesus had his disciples, Paul had his disciples, Peter has his disciples. How many of you are my own disciples, are disciples of Edikai Mary? Because those are the people who are going to be pillars, foundation, owners, holders, title holders. Me. I know. That is why a lot of Christians are not prospering today. Because of the way they think, I'm doing it for God, I'm doing it for God, I'm doing it for God. And at the end of the day, you look at their life, there's nothing they've done for themselves. Nothing tangible they've done for themselves. Somebody was going through our, our, our financial things and saw the bonds, both federal and municipal. There's someone like Roslyn, Vivian, Mary, Victoria, many of you who are members of the BMC, has. He said, so you're spending your life promoting people that you hardly know. I said, no, those are people that I know. You are giving them financial favor. I said, yes, because that's what the kingdom of God is about. That's how I make God happy. That's how what I am doing in a coded way is God's kingdom. I'm making God happy that way. I thank you. Yep. Because in the years to come, I'll be able to come to you and Give you your bonus. It's time. It's my thought. Go to the bank and cash this. You're like, what? 
because we don't have honest prophets on the earth anymore. Everybody will tell you, it's God's kingdom. We are doing it for God. Give, 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 give. They go and buy a jet. Why do they not send the money to heaven through a rocket? Why do they not? At least you can fly a rocket from California or from um, uh, or from the Mongolia territories or from Orlando, Florida. Why can't they pile that money in a rocket and send it to heaven to God? Is that what they do? All that money that you send to go to God's kingdom, you are giving to Jesus. I hope they send it on a rocket or a special plane. Is that what you are doing? You are sending it to Tesla? Tesla now is, is, is the chief manager of going up and down the space world now. Others are following. Is that what you are doing, Samantha? They are shipping all the money? Up there? All the houses they are donating? No, all the houses too that they are donating to Jesus and the God, the Father, and the Holy Ghost. They are, ship, they, they are uprooting that house. I think they are uprooting that house and giving those houses wings for them to fly and go to heaven and stay there. Isn't that something? All the money that they will collect from the houses that has been wheeled over to those churches, I think all that money is shipped to Jesus in a boat. And they will briefly stop at Barbados because that's how people like Rustling will want it to be. That before they fly it to, to heaven, they will stop by Barbados first before they stop at other places. Vivian will like it so. Eh? Vivian, I know. I know what you are thinking. Don't think I don't know. And then, and then precious Samantha is there thinking, hey, ha, ha. Eh, because you, Barbadian, are too many around the guy very well. I don't want to fight nobody. But I want that boat. I want that big ship that is bigger than seven, seven football field. I want it to land in St. Lucia too. Yeah. Oh, yeah. And then, and then Emily will be there saying, well, well, you know, Rastaman vibration, yeah, there you go. Can that, can that ship land first in Jamaica? Beautiful Jamaica, come down there, two for one, you know? Yeah, you can, you can pay for one hotel and complain all of them, bring it on. Montego Bay, down to St. Catherine, down to Kingston. Hey, yeah, man. Yay! Ja Rastafari! Ever living, ever sure. Yep. Yep. <laughs> yep. And those from Ghana and other countries are like, well, you know, we are not too far away. It's the same Atlantic Ocean flowing down the Caribbean and flowing back to us, you know. Let it come to let it come to us. You know? Everybody will want that ship to come to them. Let it go to all the different places. And by the way, the Bulumbulo guy is standing there and saying, Well, well, let it come to London. You know? Yeah. Let the ship come to London also first. And then it can go to heaven. And then, by that time, Lizzie had flown from Chicago, she's flown from Illinois, she's flown back to somewhere in Delhi or Mumbai. And she's telling her, Ruby, Ruby, stay away first. I need to go inside that ship first and inspect the content when I finish. Then you can now come. And as she's entering, she has some people with big, big bags, big, long bags following her. You know, she's going for inspection. Is she an engineer? You know, she's going to inspect the, the ship before the ship move on to other places. When she comes, when she comes, it will be Lizzie alone coming out from the ship. The rest of the people carrying the bags went through the back of the ship so nobody can see what is going on. And then Ruby can now come and do her own thing, her own checking. After that, the rest of the people in different countries, by the time that uh, the ship had towed all the different places, well, let's say like the old, old black church people say it well. And the people of Jamaica say, yeah, man, you do not need to say all that well. It's too costly and too hard to dig a well. So stop that well, you know. Uh -huh. Then let's go. 
<laughs> By the time the ship has taught the different places that the partners wanted to tour, what do you think remained to be put in the rocket and sent to heaven? Nothing. Nothing. It's gone. Nada. Nada. See how human beings treat human beings. That's why many a times I go to, I go to uh, uh, Archbishop's conferences, conferences on evangelization, and I sit there, and I can see the greed and the tricks. You can see con artists wearing suits and ties and wearing collar, white collars, wearing church gowns, and those are dignitaries. And they are all thieves. Majority of them are thieves, con artists. They think that we are all idiots. Let me let me break it down. Shanti, are you with me? Where is Shanti? All right, she's not there. Let me break it down to all of you tonight. If any human being can trick you about you doing something for God, whereas they are doing it for themselves. For himself and his children, his wife, his uncles, nephews, aunts, cousins, all of that. And the people that they can rely on to keep the people in place and to use the people to bring others. If they can fool you that is about God and you fall for it, then you will be the biggest fool. If people can fool you and tell you that if you do this, God will bless you. And you fall for it, you will be the biggest fool. Because human being knows how to use the Bible to make you a fool. And build your own kingdom. Which is the original principle of God. Is for each of us to build our own kingdoms. Each of us to own our own Rolls Royces if that's what you want. Or you are Mercedes or BMW or other, other sports cars that you want. Is the desire of God for you to raise your own tower. Your brand should be known on the earth. Whatever business you want to go into, you must have a brand with your name on it. Either your brand name or your real name on it. You must. You must. And behind it all, you are doing it for God. But you are not shouting it. Because what you do for yourself becomes God's thing. Because that's how God wanted. I will make of you a great nation. Children will come out of you. Many nations will burst out of you. It is for Abraham, his legacy. But behind the scene, if you flip the coin, it is for God, indirectly. And directly, without you making noise about it. You see, in all of this, God sent me tonight to tell you something. Since Monday, I was given this message to convey to you today, Friday. God said that since He started making human beings, there was one meeting in heaven about humans. And one thing that the family want to do for you. When I say the family, mean God the Father and Jesus and the Holy Ghost. And the workers, the angels. This is the one and only thing God has decided to do. You cannot build God a house. You don't have the material that it takes to build God a house. You can't buy God a car. You cannot buy God a plane. You don't have the money. There is no human being on earth that has enough money. There is no human government. Even if you put all the nations of the world together, they cannot, they cannot buy for God one pair of shoes. In fact, they cannot buy for God a gold ring. You know why? Because even the earth itself does not have enough product 
to buy God anything. That's why when David wanted to build God a house, God said to him, can a human being house God? Can a human being build for God? Do you think the church buildings is where God lives? Don't you know many of those church buildings are places of magic and witchcraft and war of greed? And where people live and the next thing you do, they assassinate each other. Those are buildings of betrayals. Rosalind, if, if what I'm doing tonight is right, you and Liz and the rest of you, I need people to put money on me because I represent our maker. People should be putting money on me and cheering me up. Amen. Because I am a son of the women. I am a son of every woman on the earth. I'm their son. What makes me a better businessman and a better archbishop, a better priest in the high priesthood of Jesus after the order of Melchizedek is because I have one thing and that's the greatest power on the earth. Honesty. I have honesty. That's what I have that others don't have. The other things I have from God that I'm not allowed to talk about. Is for me. If I talk about it, Vivian will kill me. I'm just, I'm just being plain. I mean what I'm saying. She will. She'll be mad at me. And I don't want her to be mad at me. Because she grew up a church girl. She know more and much about the church than any of you. Three, three of you grew up in the church. And I take three of you. I'm very careful how I respect and honor three of you. That is Mary, Vivian, and Rustin. Three of you grew up in the church. And I've been in the church till today. And I'm very glad that God decided that it is with me, your son, that your investment, your business, and the worship of God, you guys drag me along. And I'm happy about that. God has sent me tonight. God has sent me tonight to talk to each of you. And this is the message he sent me to tell you. The one meaning of heaven concerning human beings because they didn't want to listen to me. It's now about us. Those of you who are disciples of the Christ, Mary, disciples of Jesus, followers of God the Father and the Holy Ghost, walk us with the living angels. God said, I should tell each of you that heaven has one plan concerning you. And they wrote it in gold, in diamond, in silver, in bronze. And they wrote it with jewelries, type of jewelries, no longer found on the earth. It is carved into a rock. And I saw it. Everything God is doing is to promote you. You are due for promotion. 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 This is your day to be promoted. God has did. Let me tell you something. God overlooked a lot of things about you. So that he can just focus on that one thing. That he's out to do for you. Promote you, promotion of you, promote and promotion of your children, 
That's how it was put together in the meeting of heaven. And many people can accept this kind of thing because it's too hard for them. God wants to promote me? Yes. And in that promotion, it's all kind of goodies. It's a big package, including happiness. God wants you to be happy. So why are you beating yourself up? Why are you beating yourself up? <laughs> I will tell you a very bad story. Blame it on blame it on Rosalind. Please don't blame me. Blame it on her. Every one of you listen very carefully. There was this man, he goes to Faith Tabernacle Church. You know, some they call it holiness church. I call it stupid churches. Church for fools, that's what I call them. Church for fools. CFF, that's the short form for the art churches. Church for fools. That's where it goes. So, they don't touch a woman like, like you can hold a woman's hand, look her in the face. A woman will say, come here, come here, darling, let me give you a hug. And a woman will embrace you and give you a hug. They don't, they will run away. Because it's sinning, they are sinning against the Lord. The woman give you a kiss, whether it is in the forehead, on the cheek, on the lips, it's a sin against God. You can't hold, a woman cannot hold your hand, talk less of you holding a woman's hand. So, there was a, <laughs> this man went to a supermarket, it's a very big grocery, big grocery shop, one side grocery, one side electronics, one side clothing, ju jewelry, different things, it's a big supermarket. So you know the area that is normally where you have more people is the grocery. Because people are always buying food. And there is an area where you can go and buy food already cooked. So it was during the Christmas season. The Christmas was around the corner. So you know those kind of stores are always filled with a lot of Christmas paraphernalia. And tools and things to decorate homes. Different kinds of things to eat made for Christmas. So the man who was there, this man that goes to CFF. Church for fools. Yep. <laughs> so, he, <laughs> so, <laughs> so he went, he went to go and shop. Who knows what he was getting? And as people, there were a lot of crowds. So people were like on each other's shoulder. You know, you have to go to a crowd. You have to force your way around. And you will say, oh, I'm sorry. Oh, okay. Uh, you, 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 are, you are being very respectful and, God, you know, a lot of God see, but there's so many people in the store, more than the store can handle at one time. So you see, it's like, it's like, it's like people dancing to reggae in summer with Israel's vibration. And a lot of people are pushing or in New York, Times Square, or in Las Vegas before the COVID, during during summer and, and before fall begins, see, pe pe people are, there is no way that somebody is not going to hit you. Somebody is not going to touch you. I mean, people are, people's shoulders are touching people's shoulders. Are, you see somebody's hair is on your, on your, on your, on your shoulder. And I mean, it's normal. For some reason, an elderly woman, very sexy looking elderly lady, 
For some reason, I don't know how that happened. The man's hand, as they were, he was pushing his way, touched the woman's, touched the woman's milk. That's what we call it. You know, to make it look good. That he yeah, touched the woman's milk. Hi, yeah, yeah. The woman's breast. Okay. Oh, the man shouted, Jesus! In the store, everybody stopped. Everybody stopped and we're looking at him. He's a tall man. He started shouting, Jesus, I have sinned. I have sinned. Oh, I'm going to die. Oh, my God, it shouldn't happen. So people started asking him, sir, are you okay? You know, like people are thinking that maybe he did not take his medicine. He did not take his uh, his uh, mental crazy medicine, you know, something like that. That he is psych. They were thinking that he's psych. You know, people from Syria don't, instead of saying that somebody has a mental case, they say, they put it in a coded way, they say, him done psych. You know, which means the person has a, mm -hmm, need to be in the psychiatry unit, neuropsychiatry unit. So they say, him. Him done psych, psych, you know. Uh -huh. So you won't even know what they are talking about at this year they are talking about. So people are looking at, at him and like, uh, somebody said, did you take your med medication? He said, I don't take no medication. Uh, no, 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 no. I don't. Oh, this is bad. Oh, our, our pastor must hear this. Oh my, he was crying. The woman whose breast, his hand mistakenly touched. Walk up to him and said, Hey, 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 stop, stop, stop. He, he looked at the woman and he said, I'm sorry. I'm sorry, madam. I really. The woman said, Shut up. What's wrong? Did you not like it? Didn't you like it? Huh? Didn't you like it? Did you not like the way it feels? And the man's eyes were big in his head. You know? The woman looked at him and said, What is wrong about that your hand touched? Mistakenly touched me. Did you grab me? He said, No. He said, So what's the problem? He said, We are not allowed. We, we are very cautious. We don't allow that such a thing. God will kill me. The woman said, Listen to me. Listen to me. My husband was a pastor of an Episcopalian church for 50 something years before he passed away. The man said, really? He said, yes. Do you know how old I am? He said, no. The woman said, I am 79 years old. How old are you? He said, so my kids are older than you. They shot the seven breasts that your hand mistakenly touched. He said, Did you suck breast? Did you suck your mother's breast? He said, uh, He said, Yeah, tell me. Did you? He said, um, I can't remember. He said, Really? Shame on you. Shame on you. The woman said, Shame on you. It's people like you who become extremists and fanatics. What shall you go to? And the man ran out of the store. He couldn't take it. That's what we are talking about. You, want, you are living for God. Are you serious? You are living for God. You cannot live on the earth first. A normal response would have been, Oh, mom, I'm sorry. I'm sorry that my people are pushing me. I don't even know what happened. And the woman said, Okay, thank you. No problem. The man ran out of the store and the woman ran after him and said, come let me give you a hug. And told the man, run very fast. Do you guys know how that man died? A snake bit him. And my father, Agui Merida, offered to drive him to the hospital to be given a simple shot. We didn't know what kind of snake bit him or whether it was a scorpion but his leg was swollen. 
when it was a scorpion or a snake, we don't have snake around that area. We don't know what it was that beat them. He said he was coming back in the night, something by them. His legs swollen on the spot. Began to swell, swell, swell. He began to sweat, 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 sweat. And he went into convulsion. Check it like this. They pleaded with him. My father pleaded. He refused to fire self him. Let any idiot that want to die, let them die. Do you know that that man, that man took a taxi to his church that was like two hours away and went to their pastor. He died there. But trying, and most of the things people are willing to die for in the name of God is a man made doctrine. Whether it has to do with finance, whether it has to do with any kind of uh, giving, whether it has to do with you must be at the church at this time, or uh, you all is man made. And we are willing to die for a man made thing. That's why those who want to mix their religion with their racial and political viewpoint are the biggest idiots and the biggest trouble of this world. That's why I can't stand the Jewish people. I love them. I'll protect them. From next annihilation, I will never allow anybody to kill them. But their approach to the God of Abraham is totally wrong. But go and look tomorrow is Saturday. See how people are struggling. They won't cook. They won't do no job. They will have to walk on their leg. Even if it's one hour to the synagogue or their temple or whatever, they'll walk so that they do not need to drive a car. In fact, they'll have somebody to drive them on a Sabbath. Think about such nonsense. For them, for me, it's nonsense. For them, it's something that is their life, so I respect it. Not, not that, not, not that that's what I will do. Because everything God has done in this planet is for humans. It's for the promotion of humans. And that promotion keep coming. It keep coming. It keep coming. Every bad day. Every advancement. The promotion keep coming. You are always due for God's promotion. Because that was the meaning held in heaven. On your behalf is to make humans that God can promote. That's it. Go through the Ten Commandments. You see only two or three out of the Ten Commandments are for God. The rest is for your own personal promotion. To promote you. To make life easy for you. What else do you want God to do for you that he has not put it out there for you to see it in black and white? Others will cast you out of their religious and political premises because you did not give to God. You did not come to worship God. We are the last people who will, who will be worried about, oh, you came to church or you didn't come. Oh, Instead of you coming to the meeting, you are going for your child's football. I told Victoria, I said, Vicky, if Trivio has a soccer match, has a soccer game going on, go to that one, don't come to the meeting. That's the way it should be. Family come first. Family come first. That's how you show God you love him. When your family or when things that are really big needs of you come first. That's how it should be. 
Tonight, God is going to promote you. As I begin to pray, and I'm going to ask one of you to begin to pray. I'll pray first, then I'll ask one of you to pray, and when one of you begin to pray, I'll ask all of you to join. Number one, you are going to thank God that He is such a God that He is. That's number one. Number two, you are going to thank God that it is because of you that He made the earth. He did not make the earth for Himself. Okay? He made it for you. Everything that God does on this planet, in this planet, is for your promotion. Even much of what God is doing in heaven is for your promotion. Eternal Father, release the message that you sent me. Many people think that because they do not say their morning prayer, they didn't go for one meeting of God or the other, put together by people, put together by tradition and doctrine. Many people think that if they do not read the Bible, if they miss reading the Bible one day, God, you will kill them. And you know that the devil is a liar, that you are not like that. Ancient people have no sacred script to carry around and read. Yet they have you. Everything they did, they did to promote themselves. Which is promoting you also. I thank you for revealing truth to us. So that we are not carried away by every wind of cunning of human beings who are willing to use your name for self-preservation and the preservation of their own children and family members. Now let's ask somebody who understands exactly what we have been given tonight. Please let me know that you are the one who wants to pray. I want you to ask God to promote us in every way we can think of it. But once you start to pray, the promotion will begin. I want somebody who understands exactly what I'm talking about. You're giving because you are afraid that if you don't give, the windows of heaven will not be open for you and all that kind of things. I thank God for giving me revelation as to how to actually open scriptures and open heaven. Who is it that has been appointed to pray? And you know it in your deep inside you, you know you should pray. Please tell me. Everybody join and begin to pray and thank God for promoting you and begin to receive promotion. I receive promotion into every area of my life. Join Mary and begin to pray tonight.
In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. If you want to consult with me or with our team concerning anything that um, you want to overcome, you want to deal with, if, even if it has to do with investment and so on, you want to buy up uh, products and services, call Miss Victoria at 316-308-5645. Thank you very much. And I will see each of you on Sunday. Thank you so much. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Thank you, love. Let's see you